Dean of Indian Crop Science, Professor Ms. Swaminathan. Now, uh, today, in memory of Professor Swaminathan, we have one very reputed plant geneticist and crop scientist, Professor Sapandar, who is with us. And along with uh, Dr. Shoma Saminathan, chairperson of Saminathan Research Foundation. Today is a very special day for us because uh, we are remembering the dawn of uh, our green revolution in, in the Indian perspective. Professor M. Swaminathan, and we have our respected speaker with us. Now, without losing further time, so uh, I would like to proceed further because this is a very momentous occasion for us. Now, as you know, this department religiously because it is more than 50 years old, nearing almost uh, 60 years. So, uh, this is a very special occasion for this department and that too, in the light of uh, plant sciences and crop sciences. This department was established in 1964, our department of botany in Godwin University and uh, the foundation stone was laid, uh, the department was, uh, uh, you know, foundation was laid down by eminent and erudite academicians headed by Professor T. N. Bhadri, Professor Bolin Nandi, uh, Dr. Pandit Sharma, Dr. A. K. Banerjee, Professor A. K. Banerjee, Professor S. K. Chatterjee, Professor S. P. Banerjee, Professor S. K. Roy. So uh, uh, they started this journey, the uh, journey of this department. Gradually many other faculty members joined this department from time to time and we have established uh, they have established the department uh, in the true uh, academic pursuit in their respective field. And they also enlightened the academic field with their erudition, with their knowledge, and with their critical research in their respective areas. Subsequently, the department came under the umbrella of special assistance program of UGC in 1991 because of their fantastic research and you know achievements. This department then successfully completed the Department of Special Assistance and continued to grow uh, to achieve Phase 1, Phase 2 and Phase 3 final ecosystem program. In fact, the department is the first science department of this university to be considered as a center for advanced study in 2007. Since then, the department is under the different UGC CAS program and it was further selected by DST Fields for their program for funding and promotion of infrastructural facilities. At present, we have uh, facilities for state of art research and with several competent faculties, this department is uh, progressing steadily with a lot of funding from different research bodies from UGC, CSR, DSTSR, Minister of Environment Forest, DVT, DVT uh, Central and State. Now, the few words about the founder and respected professor, Professor Paulum Nanbharu Yetane. This hall is named after him, so it's very special occasion for us too. So we'd like to remember Professor Bhargavi very much. And uh, we are blessed that uh, he established this department and continued his research and we are trying to do so. So a few words about Professor Bhargavi. Professor Bhargavi uh, obtained PhD from King's College London under Professor R. R. Gates Edwards. And he joined later on the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi, as a cytogeneticist in 1947. In 1958, Professor Bhaduri uh, became the head uh, 
of the Presidency College, Calcutta, and then he moved on to uh, University of Bardon as a founder professor and head of the department of this, uh, of this institution, of this department. He even acted as vice chancellor for a brief period of this university and went on to achieve the fellow of National Academy of Sciences and he also became the former president in a cultural section in Indian Science Congress. Professor Gaudi left us in 1992. Still, the legacy is on. Now, today's program is a very special occasion to uh, show our respect to Professor Gaudi and also to the dawn of Indian crop science and the dawn of the revolution, Professor A. S. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, without wasting any time, now I would like to request on behalf of this uh, uh, department and this conference uh, the special lecture. So, I would like to request uh, and also like to take the pleasure to request uh, Professor Dutt on the stage. Professor Shokan Dutt on the stage. I would like to request Professor Shokan Dutt to please grace the chair on the dais. May I now request our HOD Professor Rajiv Bandhupadhyay to please grace the chair on the dais. I would also like to request Professor Shomin Bhattacharji to please guest the chair in the dais. May I request Professor J.P. Kesti sir to please guest the chair on the dais. Chaired by Professor Shonin Bhattacharji. So I would now like to request Professor Bhattacharji for the formal introduction of the speaker to the audience and please chair the session. Thank you, sir. Uh, very good morning to all of you. It's indeed a pleasure. Uh, great an opportunity to introduce Professor Dr. Uh, it's indeed a very uh, difficult task uh, to introduce a person who ventured uh, very, I mean, conveniently both in botany as well as agricultural science. Very few people are there in India uh, who has this uh, rare opportunity or other quality. Now, uh, at the outset, uh, let me tell you the spirit of this program. Actually, this program is uh, jointly convened by the crop research science, you know, CRSMF. Sir P. N. Bhaduri, CRSMF, crop research and seed multiplication form, in association with the Department of Botany. Uh, so um, the spirit of this program, as uh, our head of the department was telling us previously, that do we want to memorize the uh, work of uh, uh, Sir M. S. Swaminathan, who just departed uh, a few months back. So we didn't have that kind of opportunity to particularly the power bullet or the other uh, kind of work he has done by introducing semi crop genes uh, in, in, in our Indica varieties, particularly uh, cause that causes green revolution uh, in 60s uh, in wheat as well as in rice. And uh, you know the tremendous achievement being done and that make our country uh, um, self-sufficient, kind of self-sufficiency uh, achieved. Actually, he was moved by the great Indian famine in 1943. And after witnessing this, uh, he devoted his entire life uh, for having kind of a uh, agricultural system whereby we can achieve our uh, self-sufficiency, rather, 
uh, in, in so far as the food security is concerned. So food security is a thousand dollar question nowadays, you know, particularly uh, though we have uh, uh, done this green revolution has given us dividend for more than 50 years, 60 years rather, uh, but uh, we are witnessing kind of green revolution fatty and there is additional climate change issues which are coming up in forward. So under this situation, uh, our intention is to make you aware of this thing that look how the green revolution took place and uh, what was the contribution of MS Swaminathan that we will listen it from our esteemed speaker and at the same time how these issues both uh, food security as well as nutritional security can be achieved. So that was the, uh, I mean, the theme of our, of, of, of our program. So I hope, I sincerely hope that you will be benefited, uh, I mean, tremendously from this speech. Now, uh, as I told you, uh, Professor Sapan Datta, Sapan Kumar Datta, uh, it's his institution in himself, which was, uh, if, you, if, I, if, you, if I go through his CV, uh, little CV, you know, <laughs> in that sense, it will take, I mean, not less than half an hour. So I will in just tell something uh, which will inspire definitely the young minds. Actually, he graduated from Presidency College and did his Masters and PhD from Calcutta University and subsequently uh, he enjoyed different uh, postdoctoral fellowship like GATT Fellowship Germany, FMI Fellowship Switzerland and also in Cornell University. Then he started his academic journey and uh, he started his academic journey uh, as a lecturer in Ramakrishna Vishal Vivekananda College. Then he joined Visavarati University. And from there, uh, he just uh, went to Zurich, Switzerland, as senior scientist at NETH. Then he also worked as senior scientist at ED, International Rights Research Institute. And uh, uh, he became the Harvest Plus rice crop leader there. And, uh, he, uh, and at the same time, he worked in the Harvest Plus uh, uh, group of rice crop uh, leader, uh, leader in, in that particular place. And then he came uh, back to India and joined as Rasbiari professor in Calcutta University. Okay, and then uh, after that, uh, he joined as DDG, that is the Deputy Director General of Indian Council of Agriculture Research, particularly in the crop science. And so this is, uh, uh, I mean, later on he he he, he uh, just discharged several administrative jobs uh, as. Uh, Vice Chancellor of Visavarati University, Visu Bangla University, and I was asking him right now when he's not associated with Visu Bangla University, he left this uh, in 2022 itself. Then, uh, so far as uh, the fellowship is concerned, he is the fellow of several I mean, the, um, uh, uh, institutions like that, fellow of Tata Institute, Innovation Fellow, he became the fellow of National Academy of Science. There are many, I'm not mentioning others. Now, I'm coming to his research areas. Basically, he's a molecular breeder and plant geneticist. Basically, he's a molecular breeder. He's an expertise in molecular breeding and plant biotechnology. And later on, he has some work on IPR-related matters, that is international agricultural science policy and management. Now, I'm just, I mean, just telling you some of his achievements so far as the uh, plant breeding and genetics is concerned. He actually has, a, a, you know, expertise in genetic engineering of indica rice cultivars. He has a, I mean, very good expertise in indica rice cultivars and he demonstrated that how genetically engineered indica rice from the haploid embryonic cell suspension culture so he demonstrated it uh, very efficiently and he earned reputation in that aspect. He was also a member of the board and rice uh, team uh, of ED and uh, he worked on to enrich pro vitamin A, particularly the ferritin rice uh, with the high iron content. And uh, recently, uh, after uh, of recent times, he was also working in, as an RNAi mediated. Uh, I mean, uh, kind of uh, uh, the screening development of the low phytate and lux, uh, life oxygen is uh, containing rice. So that was a very good, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, claim so far as the low phytate and the lux mediated rice is concerned, you know, low lux, lux mediated rice. He was also working on climate resilient rice and biotech stress resilient chickpeas. 
So uh, off late he was uh, uh, associated with this kind of program. So what I feel, uh, that I can tell for the students is that, look, he is a man from uh, genetics and breeding, but uh, later on he uh, has expertise, he gained expertise in plant biotechnology and uh, also uh, efficiently worked uh, in Italy as well as in different international bodies of agricultural institutions for developing transgenic crops and uh, which is having some uh, one way or another related with the nutritional security of the food security as well as nutritional security of the plants. So with this field note, uh, I will request Professor Dastu to take the floor and deliver your lecture, sir. Good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation to me for this particular seminar. Um, I'm grateful to the University of Toronto. Light up, light up, light up. 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 That for this arrangement uh, of this particular seminar that remembering Shamanathan in the context of green revolution and post green revolution. And thank you for the introduction, which is kind words for me. I'm grateful. I'm this the department of Professor Dean Hazan. When we were students uh, or teachers, you always remember his uh, many pioneering work on genetics and uh, he also developed a good team as a researcher and in addition to his own contribution. So we're grateful to Professor Vadari who picked up also this Department of Botany today at Padman University who is doing extremely well. <coughs> I'm glad that uh, Dr. Shambhu Shaminathan also is with us today. Um, that he, she will be also joining on online uh, for our comments. Uh, this is a very nice befitting that when someone like me talking about Professor Shaminathan and a distinguished scientist, uh, researcher, and policymaker. Uh, like Dr. Shambha Shamanathan is also with us uh, today in this particular occasion. But I had attended many of the events organized by M.H. Shamanathan Foundation and also in other occasions I met Dr. Shambha Shamanathan uh, several times uh, and so I'm very glad that she is joining me today. So the title of my talk has, you see, the perspective of science-based food and nutrition security, remembering and a shine level. So what I did in my talk today, what I arranged, that I'll be talking about the Indian agriculture in a global perspective. With the development, I would focus uh, the pre and present and, and the future uh, post green revolution that how our food security, food and nutrition security is being uh, challenged or is being 
arranged. And at the same time, Shaminathan, I would show Professor Shaminathan uh, his contribution, his way of involvement in Indian agriculture, why one such person, one name, Shaminathan, is so much known not only in India, but also all over the world. One thing I must also say, whenever, whenever I made a presentation, I go anywhere in India and abroad, particularly abroad, and um, people always say that, oh, you are, you are from a country where Professor Shaminathan's uh, is there. And Professor Shaminathan's uh, um, name come with agriculture. So we feel always very proud of that particular name attached with Indian agriculture and globally. So the next slide uh, shows that uh, um, agriculture is a journey, the time in memorial, and it goes on from ancient time, 10, 20,000 years back, the plant domestication, and it started with that and it moves on. And I will show that journey also with you. Next. If you see the pre-green revolution, 16th and 19th century, particularly this area, very much <coughs> the agriculture started working. Transportation, fertilizer, these are all being, um, being given or added to the agriculture. 40 and 70, where is the actual development of agriculture took place? by high-link varieties, irrigation, infrastructure, modernization, hybrid seeds, synthetic fertilizer, and pesticides are being given. India at one time was the begging bowl for our food. PL480, some of our senior people know that. And today, even myself also sometimes uh, don't it's difficult to believe that India today exporting 50 US billion dollar agriculture produce. 50 US billion dollar and expanding and the projection is very high. <coughs> no? And Professor Shaminathan, what I said here, would be always remembered for his smiling face, for the success of driving the policy for achieving food and nutrition security in India and played a significant role in national and global agriculture improvement. <coughs> the background building is MS Shaminathan Foundation. Here is some of the pictures, not a nice pictures, but to show that even a few hundred years back, or even say 70, 80 years back, Bengal famine, 1943, it was mentioned in the morning, that this was our scenario in India, where although Professor Amartoshan uh, does not believe that it was lack of food production, Bengal famine, it was because of distribution, which is still today uh, is prevailing. And I say different things, uh, but a uh, scenario that people suffered because of not having enough food. Uh, this is a total Indian agriculture perspective, that 50% plus population depend on agriculture but their gross GDP is only 17%. That means agriculture-related dependent people are not doing that well in economics. 140 plus minus uh, uh, the million hectares are uh, total agriculture land, which is decreasing. Still the number shows 140, but I believe that it is much less today. And the record the food production happened in last year, and projection is continuously this will improve, which is a good thing. But the bad thing is 42% of our women and children are still malnourished, which is a very striking feature. Science, as I always say, is global and neutral in nature. It is up to us how we can use it for our better improvement. Fortunately, we had the Prime Minister, the first Prime Minister, who always and always will be remembered for this statement. Everything else can wait, but not agriculture. So that was the emphasis given to Indian agriculture. And this is the slide that 
Norman Borland on the left, C.S. Subramaniam, the agriculture minister at that time, and M.S. Shaminathan, who implemented the entire things in the country. And Professor's uh, plan of action I have written here, something, if you read it, then you will see that. Uh, what happened that uh, he got to know that uh, Norman Roller developed a branch. Shaminathan at that time was uh, in the policy, in the IRA director and DGICR. So he proposed the government that we should immediately get this material here in India. And the material, uh, he wrote a letter with the support from the government of India. And then of seeds of improved material came to India directly were grown in different parts of India, mostly in the northern part of India. At that time, it was Shaminathan who understood that, and that's the reason he could play a key role to get this work done. Otherwise, we would have delayed many, many decades uh, for our present achievement. The next slide. Again, this particular uh, scientist or professor, or Shaminathan, um, whatever way you say, he is a scientist at the same time policy maker. He understood the genetics, he understood the genetic or genetic makeup and molecular biology, so he, he understood also the genotype versus phenotype, genotype interaction with phenotype, and that's the reason he wanted the lots of material to grow in the different, adver different diverse condition of India so that the right genotype can be chosen for its multiplication, etc., etc. And that was the key uh, mind that Shaminathan had and it utilized in our agriculture. This thing meant for the young people to know they are all one decade difference of age. Norman Burdak was 11 years older than Shaminathan. Gurdev Kush on the left is 10 years junior to Dr. Shaminathan. Like Shaminathan and Norman Borlaug did for the wheat work in India, Gurdev Kush and Henry Bichel and others at International Rice Research Institute, they did the work at Edith, Philippines, where I worked for 12 years. And that material, the first uh, improved material, IRA, at that time it was referred as super rice, that also came to India and, and grow very nicely, and later on, Ratna and many other material developed from that. So these three people uh, played a significant role in achieving the green revolution. Next. This you have to be alert. Uh, Shavagathan and on our right, the man is Ismail Saragaldin. If you have any chance to listen to Ismail Saragaldin, you would love to listen to him many, many times, or every time. Such a wonderful man, wonderful policymaker. He was a vice president of the World Bank, good friend of Shaminathan. Anything he organized in Egypt, <coughs> I happens to be three times I went there. Uh, and Ismail Sarag and Shaminathan also, uh, many occasions that uh, Ismail Saragaldin came to India and arranged that, uh, attended that meeting. Shaminathan was uh, a key architecture of the Indian policy, scientific policy particularly, along with agriculture. In many occasions, many sort of key sort of positions and the key sort of interaction, he always happened and, and he interacted. This is one of the Indian Science Congress. It happened in Calcutta. If some of you have attended that uh, Indian Science Congress, you remember whatever things happen, and particularly APJ Abdul Kalam's lectures. That is a different issue. If you have a question, I, I would refer to that, but I'm not going into that, uh, that sort of text today. But here, if you, if you see the text I have written here, they, uh, at that meeting, Manmohan Singh, I had a Prime Minister did then Prime Minister had interaction with the galaxy of people, including Professor Shaminathan. And they wanted that science should be given freedom, and that including genetic, genetic modifications and as nuclear energy. This, this the policy cannot be developed by democracy, or the policy cannot be based on that what most major people think. This should be based on experts and expert views. Professor Eki Sharma, this is another uh, uh, great man. Uh, we are celebrating 100 years of his birth centenary this year. Department of Botany, Calcutta University, and many other departments of West Bengal, uh, they will organize uh, throughout the year. 
He's also a good friend of Swami Ratan. I uh, happen that I met them in many occasions, and that is another interesting thing that the plant science development. Here, this, some, some people are together. This was always being organized by Professor Shamanathan. The CGI, AR, GPAR, and then FAO, and all other uh, the people or the, who are in the different kind of positions who could play a key role in the agriculture, they always get together and interact and, and, and move forward. Now here are a few slides, two, three slides I kept, which is mainly to show uh, from where Professor Shaminathan and moves from his uh, date of birth or born in Tamil Nadu and, and in 26. And then onwards, if you see that uh, uh, how he uh, grew up, particularly he, his PhD is Cambridge University, England. First time he met uh, Norman Borlaug, that is in 1953. Um, at the uh, University of Wisconsin Medicine, US. <coughs> Incidentally, that year I was born. And when he met uh, Borlaug uh, at that time, the next slide you see, he was head of botany department of IRI. Can you imagine? He he is also partly a person that he is so much attached to plant and uh, plant science. So at that time, IRI uh, genetics department actually was a botany department. And which is, we all know that plant science actually is the mother of uh, many different disciplines and subjects today. He was the head of the botany department of uh, IRI, gradually moves to director of IRI, then DG, ICR, etc., 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 et et that keeps on moving, DG, E, and so on and so forth. And then further, 1983, then founder president of National Academy of Agriculture Science, MP, Rajya Shabha. President IUCN, Chairman National Commission of Farmers of India, that he played a very important role. Today, all the MSP and everything, what you see, all the government has adopted his policy, and that's the way the farmers benefit are so much uh, significant today, that's because of his uh, Chairman Commission support. Chair, World mm -hmm. Food Prize Laureate, Selection Committee for One Decade. Normally, World Food Prize laureate are referred as Nobel Prize for Agriculture and Food and, and, and a like subject. And he, not only he received that uh, uh, award, but he was the chairman for 10 years of that uh, World Food Prize. Uh, further, chair, even Food Congress, General President Indian Science Congress, President Puwars Conference, coordinated the Hunger Task Force of the UN Millennium Project, where many of you are familiar. It's still gone, the list is so big, and, and you, you can con continue to talk on each one of them, to, you can continue uh, for, for a long time. But the, one of the things, number seven, the Time Magazine named, his name is one of the three members uh, were the most influential people from Asia, and that is, after Tagore and Gandhi, his name comes. So these three names. So his name is with Tagore and Gandhi uh, in the same 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 status. That's the family. It's a wonderful family. Uh, if you ever visit his uh, Shamanathan Foundation or any meeting, he has three great uh, distinguished daughters and uh, who are who held high positions uh, in India and internationally. And so he had a wonderful family that in his uh, own personal level. Now here I start the journey of uh, the agriculture that what I'm, I'm going to talk today. So if you see the population that uh, today and in 1900 <coughs> and 1960, 1900, 1960, and 2023. So if you see the uh, change of population, India today 1.4 and world population is 8.1. Indian, uh, the fraction on all the cereals, that also you see that uh, is a tremendously significantly it has improved and increased. Same to the world production. So the 
আপনার তখন দেখলেন বর্ধমান বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের বোটানি বিভাগের প্রফেসর এস এম স্বামীনাথানের বিষয়ে সেমিনার সরাসরি সম্মোজিতে মুকুল রহমানের রিপোর্ট